Welcome back. Part two uh, with Jeff Massey, County Administrator of Washington County, Florida. In the first segment, Jeff, we kind of talked a little bit about COVID-19 and Hurricane Michael, the unanticipated expenses in both of those cases. Let's talk a little bit about what you've got going on, how you're budgeting, what you're making happen. I noticed that there's a lot of road work going on. You guys have there touted is. the fact that you were able to pave a mile of road in the Orange Hill area without the use of grants. Talk a little bit about, um, let's, start, let's start where I would like to consider the beginning. During Hurricane Michael, we found ourselves with a lot of debris that had to be removed. A Your options were to pay a, a vendor, pay a contractor to get rid of it. Uh, you guys came up with a great idea. You decided that you would permit your own, uh, your own pit. You would accept, uh, you would charge yourselves and other areas to, to burn that stuff and to, to process it, and thereby making money, which you then turned into another pit. Talk a little bit about how all that transpired. Well, um, you're correct. Of course, most of the people that were, that were familiar with this area knew that you really couldn't go anywhere from the central to the east part of the county. I mean, every road was affected. Uh, and, and we're blessed with a bunch of huge, huge trees in this county. Uh, uh, beautiful oaks, pines, and everything. Well, it, it was, the county was virtually untravelable, and not to mention the power lines. So yes, we did have a contractor in place. We did have help. Uh, Santa Rosa County sent a strike team over that helped us clear roads. And on that, on that team, they sent over, they had like five, five or six teams over here. And it was a fire truck but those guys were equipped with saws and everything, a paramedic, everything, because we're trying to get through the roads because now we don't know if our citizens are hurt, if there's a house, a tree on their house or anything. We're trying to get to folks. So as family started checking on family, the reports came in. Those guys were out front. And so um, we were able to get to our citizens pretty quick that needed us the worst. So we did that. But as a result of all this debris, it had to go somewhere, and there's many ways to handle it. Other counties decided to uh, permit big burn pits. Uh, we elected for our contractor to chip into a fine chip all of the uh, debris, and I think we had uh, a million and a half loose yards of, of, of debris, maybe a little more than that, actually a lot more than that, but some of it we couldn't get to because of the flooding we had in the south part of the county. And uh, that's just now gone down to where we're going to have to go back in there around Wages Pond area and stuff like that and do some of that. But a um, year and a half later, you oh, finally, yeah. finally able to address yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And we had, you know, we had a natural occurring event happen. A lot of people thought it was uh, associated with some type of flooding. Well, it was flooding, but it was because we had uh, uh, historic water table elevations highest has ever been recorded in the county. So uh, wet weather ponds that normally don't hold wet, uh, water, when that event occurred, it flooded everything down there and you couldn't get to a lot of it, uh, the debris, and it just it coincided with Michael. The interesting so. thing is that that occurred, what, two or three years after we had had some of the lowest uh, levels that we yeah. had had. Yeah, because a lot of those karst yeah. ponds had, dri had dried up along uh, Highway 20 there. And uh, Well, the reason I can speak intelligently on that is because, you know, folks were right, rightfully so upset about that. And they were looking for us to help. Well, I didn't know how to help them with this. So we got a, a hydrologist in here. And, and he went ahead and, and tested and did all the surveying. And he came back and gave a report to the board, say, here's what you guys are dealing with. And he goes, you've got to pray for some dry weather. Interesting. To kind of get this down. So uh, we wanted the public to know we were doing everything we could. But some things, Mother Nature, you can't overcome. And that was one of the challenging things we had. But going back to Michael, yes. So we started grinding the chips and we set up a couple distribution points that I got permitted with the state to take the debris. They would chip it, then they would bring it to the permit we had with Moonseed uh, Pit to accept the, the chips. And we had, a, we had to landfill it and we had, there has to be a plan. You can't just go out there and pile stuff up. So this was a graded, uh, facility and, and uh, we managed it every day. We had to have people monitoring everything that came in. It's all documented. You have to do that if you're going to get reimbursed for FEMA. And so we had a couple contractors, Crowder Gulf, Whit O'Brien, and then Wheeler, our PA contractor, all in place because they all have f functional things that have to happen through them for us to comply with FEMA rules and regulations for reimbursement. So yeah, instead of us taking them somewhere else, and that money going somewhere else, we took them here, and we, we put some money uh, uh, in the county coffers, and we were able to secure. Ballpark, with, what kind of money are you talking about? Uh, 
I think when we were said and done, we put about a million, yeah, it was a million and a half dollars that uh, we took from wood chips. And the cool thing about it is they're sitting out there right now, but they're composting. Here in about five years, we're going to have the best topsoil in this part of the country, and uh, uh, you know we'll give it to somebody. That <laughs> so this is the million and a half dollars you made instead of putting out who God knows how much money to have disposed of oh, them yeah. Yeah. as a cost. So you, you talk about making lemonade out of lemons. Well, I mean that's uh, sometimes you just got to do what makes common sense. You know, that Unfortunately, one, we don't always see that. Well, the sometimes case. we don't, but that one was too easy to pass up right there, I can tell you, uh, for us. But uh, no, and, and so we're still, we're still feeling the results of Michael now that our debris well, is and gone. I'm going to stop you one more yeah. time. Before you go any further, you took that million and a half dollars and parlayed it into another positive, right? Didn't you use that money to buy a, another dirt pit? We, we did. The process? Our dirt pits were being depleted, uh, especially with the amount of uh, road work we were having to do. And so... Um, we took part of that money and bought uh, a couple hundred acres adjacent or contiguous to uh, one of our best pits that is just about com you know depleted and and so now we can sustain ourselves for the next 20 or 30 years and um, that was real helpful to be able to do that because you know I'm not, we had had to take that money from somewhere to do it and we had to do it we have to have access to dirt and so. Uh, that was just a blessing that we had that money there to draw from to buy that property. Nobody doesn't like complaining about their dirt road if you live on a dirt road. And they say, well, why can't they bring in a few loads of dirt? Well, they don't think about what they're saying because there is expense. You've got man, men driving the trucks, you've got heavy equipment that are loading the trucks, and you have to buy the dirt if you, have to, if you don't have access to it. So when you have your own dirt, then you can, you can certainly expedite that process. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say it's, you've got high marks so far on all of that, so, so go forward. Well, it's very important, if you talk about roads, it's a very important issue in our county to everybody that lives here. We have uh, you know, 600 miles of dirt roads, okay? The thing unique about our county is we have uh, uh, a mixture of sand and clay. And if you go down south, it's sand. Now, what happens to sand? You can go grade it, but after a few vehicles go down, especially at high rate of speed, it washboards very quickly. You can't keep up with that. So we have a plan, and, and what we're doing is we're putting out a sandy clay mixture so it holds up well during wet weather and it holds up well during dry weather. And, and, it, and it tightens better and everything. But we're, most of our roads are, are being addressed through FEMA repairs. And so we have a plan for that. It's dirt, it's rock, we mix it. Uh, hopefully at the end of this thing, we're gonna be able to go back uh, with funds that we're gonna procure through this process to pave a whole lot of roads. And we have several paving projects pending now. I've got uh, Hartford uh, Boulevard uh, and Sunny Hills tying into Quail Hollow and Buckhorn. We've got funding for that already. Uh, Crystal Lake down there, boat ramp to boat ramp. Uh, I've got monies obligated from the state to do that and control that water because what happens in a major rain event is because Crystal Lake sits in that bowl like it does, all that rudder runs downhill and you'll see these flumes of sand and silt. People don't know that lake has a direct, it is sitting right over the Florida aquifer and it's not little springs, there's a big, I've, I've looked at it, uh, they've done you know, certain, uh, studies on it. So. Um, that actually was how I got some funding for that, is because it's such the environmental impact. So by this paving project, we're going to control the rainwater. You're not going to see the flumes anymore. The only thing going in that lake is going to be rainwater, and you're not going to stop that. You're protecting your water. You're satisfying yeah. your citizens by giving them a paved road. I mean, what's the downside there? It's all, it's all upside. No, and I think the citizens are very excited about it, and I've talked to several of them. And uh, uh, I think they really do appreciate the efforts that Commissioner Joyner and and uh, Public Works and, and everybody associated is doing down there. But we're doing that all over the county. There's things all over the county that we need to address. We just had some issues that were more serious than others that we had to try to get out there and grab while the funding was there. Uh, believe me, we've got things to do all over the county because whether you're at the east side, west side, south side, north side, all a gorgeous place, all has issues that we at some point in time have to address. And I think that's what the taxpayers expect us to do. The problem is, is you can't do it all at once. So you have to have a work plan. And if you get a work plan and follow it, these things will get done. 
Now, are there going to be monkey wrenches thrown in there? Absolutely there will be. But, but you got to know how to take care of the monkey wrench and get back on your work plan. And so that's what we're really focusing on. And, and um, I'm telling you, uh, I'm, I'm really proud of our staff at Public Works and the job they're doing. I'm very proud of our administrative staff and what they've been going through and how hard they've been working. That's why we're successful. You know, the board is great. I do what I can. When it comes down to it, it's the people. And if you don't have good people, you're not going to have the best results. And I'm telling you, the reason we're getting results is because of the employees of this county. And uh, uh, makes a lot of fun when you work with people like that, you know. As I mentioned in the first part of the, the first segment of the show, you have a cohesive sitting board of directors. Mm -hmm. You have a good administration, yourself heading that up, and then all of your people that surround you. You have to run a county just like you would a business. You can't borrow money you don't have, or you can't spend money you don't have. You can't borrow yourself into prosperity. When you start borrowing money, you're going down the wrong hole. You guys have, have built a business structure. You have a business plan with a long-term plan. One thing that when you were talking about the roads, isn't there a plan to hard surface a certain percentage of the roads in the county as well? Yes, I'll tell you the plan is, as many of them as we can do. Because the advantage of that is, number one, uh, the quality of travel automatically improves, property values improve. Um, uh, not to mention that if I cut 600 miles of dirt road into 300, I only need half as many road graders. You know, there's expense to all that. We could take that money and apply it somewhere else and something that needs to be done. And so it's, uh, there's a lot of upsides to that. But yes, we are, we are planning to pave as many as we can get. Uh, a lot of that's going to be determined uh, once we get done with our FEMA work on what kind of funds we have left, which we're anticipating to be quite a healthy number uh, to do exactly what you're saying is pave these roads. And yes. We're, we're, we're going to work on that hard. So, One thing to bring this conversation to full circle is that you cannot spend money you don't have. You don't want to uh, raise taxes. You've been successful at lowering the ad valorem uh, yes. rate for the third year in a row. You are on the road to being debt free, a little bit extended from because of Hurricane Michael stepping foot in the middle of your plan. But it, it again, just as we started off by talking, it all centers around having good facts and figures about our residents and that census effort is exactly what is a key piece of that. So I, I don't know if you want to speak directly to the, uh, to the citizens of Washington County, but I, I can't stress enough the importance of, uh, of participating. It, it is important and um, there, there's many challenges we're still facing that a lot of people don't see. Number one, uh, we're in a budget and we know we've lost revenue due to COVID and uh, because we were kicking pretty good there before that hit. Uh, but now, if you look April, May, June, probably going to go into July, we're going to see a drastic reduction in, in our revenues. And so, uh, now how do, you, how do you know that number? I can't sit down and do a budget today and know what my revenue is going to be. I don't know how we're going to be affected. If it wasn't for that, I, think I could get pretty close. But um, it's going to bring challenges. And so, every dollar that we can secure uh, to help Washington County and, and the residents of this county is important. So census is just one piece of the puzzle that helps us get there because we know this 10-year number that we're fixing to come out with is what we're going to have to live with for 10 years. And keep in mind, every year there's different pots of money that we could probably access and, it, and in some cases it's tied to population. Okay? And so uh, the CARES Act money, it looks like before it's over with, it may be tied to population. So, uh, yeah, it's very important. And, um, but not only that, uh, I'm the first guy, I'm very private too. I don't like people, you know, coming up to my house that I don't know and things like that. I don't feel that way about the census because I feel more, more about, um, I think it's my responsibility as a citizen to do this. Um, so I, I urge everybody to try to make an effort to do that. It takes 10 minutes online, or you can fill it out and mail it in. But uh, uh, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see a good high number when all this is done, a percentage of people that participated. Well, for as little effort nice. as it takes, there's no excuse not to participate. Here's the facts, though. It's a $100 penalty if you don't participate in the census. I don't know if that's enforced or not, but they can penalize you. So it's a little silly. 
Um, they also can have up to a $500 fine for giving incorrect information purposefully. So, hey, do the right thing. The domain is on the screen right now in this uh, video description. There's a hyperlink. Click on that. As Jeff points out, a 10-minute process. Jeff, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to make this a semi-irregular appearance by you on the show. I think it's important to let the folks know where their monies are going, that work is being done in the face of these uh, challenges, Hurricane Michael, COVID-19. Uh, a lot of people don't know which way to turn. It's really reassuring when they know the county has a plan, they are making things happen. Sometimes when you say nothing, the perception is that you're doing nothing, but uh, you guys are doing a great job. Is there anything that we may, uh, may not have addressed during the two segments of the show that you'd like to bring up? No, I, I think we've kind of covered a good area there and what's going on. But I will say this, there's a lot more going on than we talked about. So yeah, maybe that'd be a conversation for another day, but I can tell you this, we're going to keep our minds focused and our hearts focused on doing the right things, no matter how bad of a curveball we get thrown, whether it be a storm or a pandemic, we're going to stay focused and do the best we can for our citizens. Because uh, I, I like to look at things in a more positive light than letting fear and all that other stuff uh, dominate you. So we're working hard. Information yeah. is light. Light uh, takes away the, the, the dark and, and the dark is the ignorance. And so communication is key. Absolutely. Yep. And you and I'm glad that you say that more is going on because that that opens up uh, the opportunity for you to come back soon. And again, okay, thanks yeah. for being here. I'd today. love to. Absolutely. Our guest today has been Jeff Massey, County Administrator for Washington County, Florida. Uh, Jeff's coming back soon, as he pointed out. Um, there's lots going on, certainly a lot that you should be aware of. Um, school starts back soon. We've got a summer vacation that comes first, but there's going to be a new normal, obviously. Uh, but we uh, encourage you to stay tuned. Uh, there's always something to learn on this show. We appreciate you watching, and we will be right back.